McCarthy, 69 kilo third place finisher, Gregory Johnson in the 93s finished in second place. And to open with, we're just gonna have you quickly tell us a little bit about how your day went for you. So go ahead, Kelsey. Uh, I mean, overall, it was probably a better day than I anticipated coming into it. Um, probably about four weeks ago, uh, training kind of stalled out a little bit on squat um, where I'd hoped it would end up. Um, so I kind of was a little up in the air of where that would end. Um, was just kind of hoping on the uh, day it would return. Um, and it actually showed up better than I expected. Uh, for bench, um, it's been a struggle point for me probably my whole powerlifting career, um, especially my raw benching. So it was a five kilo PR. Um, it was kind of shooting for the elusive 100 kilo bench, but we'll uh, have to head back to the drawing board to find that somewhere. Um, and deadlifts probably went um, the best out of the three today. Um, in training, I ended up uh, finishing with a 195 single uh, about a week ago. And um, by the end of the, the third attempt, it was uh, my all-time PR was 205 raw. So we kind of decided to go for a little bit of a YOLO attempt and uh, see what, what was there. Um, and it actually moved a lot better than I uh, anticipated, especially with a big jump from uh, second to third. Uh, for, for me, this was almost a last minute decision. I was basically just doing some sort of training to be able to make certain I maintained my lifting all the way up till June for Equip Nationals. But after a couple of calls with some great people reminding me that, yeah, technically you're qualified for this, why not? So I'm, I enjoy both sides of lifting. So today's lifting Squats were a really big surprise. I don't think I put anything above 260 on my back the whole session. It's been mostly volume. My coach knows I have notoriously bad knees, so I try to make certain that I limit <laughs> the amount of weight I put on my back, but apparently a lot of rest really makes for a very solid squat session. Uh, bench, we've been dealing with a torn labrum since 2021, so the whole goal was to slowly build up over time and make certain that I stayed healthy, but also got through attempts. So we're able to do that. At least I know that I can do 155 now, so we're slowly improving. And deadlift was, I can only like hit a big deadlift maybe like once a year. And so it takes me a while to build up to it, several months. And coming off the heels of 2022 Worlds, I definitely was <laughs> detrained. So we took what we could. Today was a little slow, but you know what? We had fun with it, and I'm just glad I got 355 in the end. Yeah, that was 2022 Worlds where you broke the <laughs> right, we'll pass over to Matt Gary. Um, congratulations to both of you on your performances. I think it's exciting to see uh, equip lifters trying out raw, just as like I enjoy seeing raw lifters trying out the equip stuff. Um, I got my start in the sport in equip lifting, uh, probably before the two of you were both born, um, so that dates me. Um, but and and I used to use uh, raw training uh, kind of as a segue into the equip training. And I know, Greg, it sounded like you were kind of doing that at this meet. Um, is there a shift in mentality uh, or, or, or mental strategy um, when you're transitioning from one genre to the next? And how do you kind of cope with that, both of you? Uh, so usually if I'm, my focus is for an equip meet, um, I tend to not push my raw lifts as much. If I feel that it's there, um, I'll try to, to push it a little bit, but if I know something's bothering me, um, I'll just kind of hold it to where it was because I know the end game is switching into that equipment. Um, and I feel depending on where the injury is, sometimes just getting into the, the suit a little bit earlier actually saves me a little bit more and takes a little bit of stress off. Um, so kind of for me coming off of 2021 after – uh, World Games, I was having like a little bit of a quad and back issue. Um, we are going into Worlds in 2022. I don't, I didn't squat more than 155 kilos. Um, that was the most I put on my back and then I would just put my suit on and go up from there. Um, so that was kind of part of my decision was um, really wanting to 
be able to push my raw numbers and kind of see where they are, um, knowing that it definitely helps me translate once I put the gear back on um, and gives me a little bit more of a push once the gear comes back out. I would say that the mentality for me, honestly, no matter what, whether raw or equipped, I want to win. I want to be able to do my best. I want to be able to show it on the platform. But ultimately, I know that I don't, can't possibly give 100% to everything. So sometimes I have to limit what I'm going to be able to do. So in the raw mindset, I know that I'm definitely less competitive, but I do know that I can push with the best of them at least. So my mindset is more of let's do what we can and try and stay healthy as we are building up, hitting heavy singles. For the equipment, there is always a shot that somebody may miss. There's always a shot that somebody may be high that day. So if, for that, the mentality shifts to let's get every last inch that we can. And if we get hurt, then we get hurt and trying to roll into that. So I think my mentality is a little bit more reckless with the temp selection, a little bit more reckless with what I take in practice. Basically, raw is consistent, safe, <laughs> equipped lifting for me is more, uh, okay, we got this. Let's hop it up to something big and pray somebody blinks when they're looking at my dip. <laughs> so specifically, like, what, uh, what went into the decision to come into this meet? Um, at, since, like, Ch uh, Kelsey, you're the reigning world champion right now in equipment. You finish in second in the world games. Like, you have a huge resume. Um, what, what was the motivation for doing classic open nationals? Um, I mean, part of it was it, it gave me a chance to actually uh, put focus on my raw numbers, which I won't do if I'm just looking at the next equip meet. Um, and there was a external, uh, strong influence that gave a lot of encouragement to come. Um, but ultimately it, it kind of came down to, I know if I was just at home training, I wouldn't try to push them as much. If I just felt they weren't there that day, I'd probably just be doing a lot of volume instead of actually trying to see where my raw numbers were. Um, so that's kind of partially what was my influ uh, decision to, to come down and kind of throw my hat in the ring on the raw side um, and then supported very strongly. Um, I think back in November, uh, it was kind of thrown out there of like, mark, mark your calendar for this one. Um, and it was kind of see what shape we were in after Worlds in, uh, in Denmark. Um, so I was not too beat up for it. So I was like, oh, we might as well see what happens. Well, I would say there are four strong motivations for me doing this. First of all, it's in Texas. I live here. It's three hours to get here, three hours to get back. I am very, it's very easy for me to navigate. Second, there wasn't a lead up like extra qualifier I had to do, like IPF meet helped me get here. So I was like, well, that's even less costs. Third is I like getting stronger. Getting stronger, it's exciting. It's always fun to hit PRs, increase your totals. So I wanted to make sure I do that on a platform that's legitimate and you know that you earn the lift. And fourth, why not make Powerlifting America as best as it can? So we are trying to grow this organization and try to put as much as we can into giving back to the lifters, giving back to the spotters, the loaders, the referees. And I think a little bit of appreciation of that is, you know, making certain that I get a chance to, you know, more numbers, more exposure, that sort of thing. So, you know, let's, even though it's weird to say giving back as a lifter, I would say that, that the motivation is like, let's work and, you know, up the numbers a little bit, make it look, make it make this a real nice production. How much did the Alico barbecue play a role in the <laughs> <laughs> Should I increase that to number five? Five reasons? Should I say that? <laughs> there may have been a hidden fifth reason I wasn't going to mention, but let's just say I love barbecue to death. <laughs> Couldn't call myself a Texan if I said otherwise. After this, we're going to be seeing you both at uh, Equip Nationals in Scottsdale then in June? Or are you De going raw now? No, you'll see me in June. <laughs> you'll see me in June, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I think some raw lifters will be having a good time.
and a sigh of relief. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, congratulations again on your great performances today and all of your amazing accolades that you've had throughout these years. So you're both amazing people and great listeners, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.